I was thinking during the worship there that we are, we are moving toward the 50th year anniversary of Roe. And um, there, there are some who are saying this will be our Jubilee year, the year that we come out from under this uh, evil decree, which is what it is. It's an evil decree. And um, I believe that's, that is the case. But I believe that, um, as Clay said, and as we alluded to this morning, uh, there's, there's a, a very intense war coming spiritually, which will also, um, it won't be limited just to the spiritual realm. It's going to be a lot of violence, I believe. So I'm going to read this letter that uh, was written that one Matt Staver, his people, uh, released through charisma to uh, describe some of the witchcraft and the uh, um, evil that is being directed against the ch uh, churches right now and the pro-life movement. And I'm doing this is for the same reason. Clay, I want to say the same thing. I'm not trying to alarm you. I'm trying to make sure that we're ready. Because we are the, those that need to stand in the gap for the nation right now and push against this and, and get in the gap, stand in the gap to stop what he wants to do. So <clears throat> this is... Uh, on Sunday afternoon, I'm not sure of the date, but it was a recent Sunday, some of our Washington, D.C. based staff members participated in a prayer vigil outside the Supreme Court. Our staff members collectively have decades of experience in the district and in the fight to, def to defend human life. But even all those years of experience could not prepare us for what we have witnessed lately. A small podium and two loudspeakers had been set up to allow the prayer vigil, attend, prayer vigil in t attendees to speak and play worship songs. But as prayer began, our staff and the intercessors were surrounded by darkness, black robed men and women began arriving on the scene, screaming obscenities over the prayers. Screams of blank your God and your religion began to fill the air. Yeah. One of the things you can see by this and, and by other reports uh, is the spiritual nature of this battle. It's not just, uh, uh, the, the protests are not just directed at people. God is brought into it always, always. That's because the bloodthirsty demons behind abortion, the shedding of innocent blood, are, uh, they are filled with wrath right now because they see the potential of this ending. And it is a, it is a demonic battle. So we're going to have to deal with a portion of it demonically, not just people. There's some of this that law enforcement cannot deal with. As the prayer team's worship music continued, a pro-abortion demonstrator brought a wagon carrying a large boombox, blaring satanic music and noise. Its volume increased to drown out the songs of praise. Nonetheless, the intercessors continued to pray. One of our staff members who was in attendance says the longer we prayed, the more anxious and agitated the Satanists became. The evil surrounding the intercessors did not want the word of the Lord proclaimed. Women dressed like prostitutes began to arrive leaving little of their exposed bodies to the imagination. They gleefully joined the melee 
the witches and warlocks had begun. A woman walked right up to our podium and stood next to the pro-life speaker. Every time the pro-life pro-lifer spoke, the woman would scream unprintable curses into a megaphone pointed at the podium microphone. The abortion crowd began cursing the justices, the people praying, and God himself. Why am I doing this? I want you to know this is a spiritual war. We're going to have to, we, we are going to have to remember this and deal with it as such, not just as a physical thing or a mental or an intellectual thing. We are moving into a heightened level of spiritual war to try and stop what God is doing. Repeatedly, the Satanists and pro-abortion protesters would interrupt and try to drown out the prayers. One lady there says she has lived and worked on Capitol Hill for decades. She's participated in more pro-life prayer vigils than she can count. She's personally witnessed the violent protests of Antifa, BLM, others during the days of the Kavanaugh hearings, we had to hire additional security guards, but we have never witnessed the level of evil taking place before the Supreme Court and in the district now. Satan worshipers have covered sidewalks with black magic ritual circles, candles, performing their dark incantations near midnight, near midnight most evenings. Half-burned candles and other garbage of active witchcraft lay scattered on the public spaces around the court. She tells, describes a warlock who came and literally um, started going to individual individuals and trying to, you know, you know, right in front of them and make signs and decree curses over, over their head and from one to the other. No point in reading some of this, but. I think that's all I need to read. been thumbing through the scriptures up here and looking at different passages that describe um, at times Satan's reaction when God is doing something significant. He, he, he tries to counteract what the Lord is, um, is doing. And I just think it's imperative for us to get to a place where we're not afraid and we're not going to be moved by what the enemy does. And stand in our position as intercessors and watchmen and literally just position ourselves and say, you're not going to stop this through your fear, your intimidation, your noise, your witchcraft, your violence, you are not going to stop what God is doing. Uh, I um, was looking at the uh, early church and what happened when God began to move. And rightfully so, as we talk about the day of Pentecost and, and the book of Acts, we focus not on the persecution, we, we focus on what God was doing. However, we need to remember that in the midst of it, there was great demonic assault trying to stop what God was doing. 
and there was violence against members of the church. There were, there were martyrs, there were, there were others thrown in jail. Many in the church were scattered. All of it, God just, God just helped them maneuver through all of it. He even used the scattering to disperse the gospel. He will take what the enemy's doing and is about to try and do in our nation, and he will turn it if we stand. If we, the church, stand. We cannot put our confidence in law enforcement. I mean, in, in appropriate ways, we, you know what I'm saying. We, we can't put all of our confidence there. We have to do our part. And I think in past seasons, we haven't. We haven't known how to do that. Uh, but in this season, we do know how to do that. And we must do that. 